What's up guys, BSDX here and I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to produce a cinematic effect in Photoshop. As you can see I've just got a plain image uh, that I downloaded off the internet and I'm going to show you how to convert it from this into this. So as you can see it's more cinematic with the widescreen. Um, main things you need for the image, you need to have a clear foreground and background. As you can see in this image, the skateboard and the skateboarder are the main foreground whereas the ramps and the people are the background. Uh, the first thing you want to do is cut out the foreground. This is the most time consuming part so I will speed this up and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I just finished that. Um, forgot to mention that if you're wanting to use this image um, to work through whilst watching this tutorial, um, you can do so. I have the link to, just to download this in the description. Okay, once you've cut out the main image, uh, make sure you select it and uh, click layer via copy. And depending on how many uh, parts to the foreground there are, Merging together, Control E. Um, from here, you now want to go onto the main image, go to Filter, uh, Blur, Lens Blur, and because I've done this before, um, my properties have already been the same. So you want it on octang Octagon, Radius at 13, Rotation at 30 and the threshold to the highest point you can go with distribution on uniform. Click OK and I've just done that wrong. Control Z. Hold Control and select, select the uh, foreground. Select inverse and now filter blur lens blur so now that the whole background blurs and the foreground is the same with those properties. Okay. Now you can deselect. Okay, now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is the color correction. So the first thing we need to do is create a new gradient map. This will be black and white. And we want to keep this at normal, we will pace it down to about 25. This is just a, a rough uh, guide to uh, color correction for cinematic. It can vary, you can play around with them. Next one, another gradient map. Uh, this time it wants to be, instead of white, a uh, grey blue. About there. And that wants to be set to colour with a pace down to about 15. Okay, and then on the gradient map, this time, this time it wants to be a really vivid blue uh, with a really vivid, vivid green. Make sure it's blue to green. I want to be set to hue and base it down to about 25. Once again another gradient map. This time it is the purple and orange and wants to be down to soft light at about 75. Like I said you can vary the uh, different values. A fifth gradient map um, and replacing the white with a light orange and that wants to be set to colour and place it down to about 30% and a final gradient map 
this is the most tricky one. Just take the blue, red, and yellow. And we want to move the red in and the blue in. Create a new color. Make this orange. And then make sure that our blue, uh, there are each color is uh, equally spread apart. Hit OK. And then select uh, multiply. And maybe down to five percent. You can vary, so you can multiply or lighten. So how they go lighter or darker. In this case, I'm going to go darker. Um, once we've got all the gradient maps, we then want to uh, open up a star image. Uh, you can download this image um, from the description below. I'll have that linked as well. Um, okay, once you've got this image, you want to drag this into the uh, image we're working on and uh, scale it down so that it uh, takes most of the thing. Right. Blend mode for this wants to be color dodge and then set the opacity down to about 20. This just gives a little particle effect that uh, cinematics does. Um, at this point, you then want to press control and click on the image from the foreground, making sure that you're selected on this star image. Left click and, in fact, no, don't mean to do that, just click delete which will cut out the shape of our foreground so that the cinematic particles appear to be behind the main foreground. Okay, next thing we do is create a new layer and go to image, apply image. This just flattens the image and puts it into a new layer. Then go to filter, sharpen, sharpen edges no real difference apart from it just sharpens it a bit more then create a new layer again apply image and this time if I was you I would just save uh, the project because it does it is prone to crashing and um, so you lose all your work uh, go to filter render lighting effects And this effectively gives you a, uh, a fake sun, because I think of it. So you look at the picture and you notice that where the direction of the sunlight is coming from. Um, so you have to play around with the, the width, the location, the height, uh, until you get it in the right spot. I think. About there. Okay. Okay, from here, about done. We now want to add the uh, widescreen. So create a new layer, make sure your colors on black, and then go to the rectangle tool. Build up your widescreen black lines, both bottom and top. Doesn't need to be perfect the uh, in size yet. As we're going to uh, adjust it, this image that we uh, applied and I'm delighting for it too. We then want to uh, want to twist this image degree and move it so that the corner is now off here and then we want to go to the crop tool and crop it so that this image part here is down and bring it down so the widescreens are much thinner it's about that 
and now you can see very roughly what the cinematic effect looks like. So okay, that's what we that's the previous one I did. So we're pretty close. So hope you like this tutorial guys. Uh, this was highly requested from a lot of you, so big thanks to you for recommending it for me to do. Um, please comment, rate and subscribe, and until next time, see ya!